Okay, so this is part two um, of my intro to styling wigs and roller sets videos. Um, the other one took a little bit longer than what I anticipated. Um, so this is going to be the second part of that one. So um, in the very first video, we kind of went through um, everything you might need for like a basic like kind of like wig styling and like wig shop kit. Um, the very first thing that I mentioned in that video, in case you aren't watching that one, um, is that the very first thing you need to know before you start styling your wig is whether it is synthetic or human. So if it's human hair, you can style it just like you would a regular head of human hair. If it's synthetic, you can't. So if it's synthetic, you cannot put straight heat on it. Um, some synthetic hair is made so that it can like tolerate a certain amount of heat or there's like synthetic curling irons and things. Um, I don't trust them. I've used synthetic curling irons and I've used hair like that and like it, it does work but it just really scares me. Um, so you wanna make sure you're testing your hair um, either by like burning it or personally I like to um, curl it or straighten it to see how it reacts to heat because um, I'm afraid of lighting random things on fire um, which I think most people should be um, so that's what I like to do and if it starts like melting or it smells really chemically or it gets hard and like beads up it's synthetic a lot of wigs are gonna try to trick you um, and they try to act like they are fully human hair but then you go and you read the label and it's actually a blend with synthetic or it says like some crazy word that you don't know that's probably synthetic um, so be really careful um, you don't want to do all this work and then style your wig and have it get destroyed because it said it was 100% human hair but in fine print it's 100% human hair blend um, so be really careful figure that out step one um, then obviously you're gonna gather all your tools and everything that we discussed in the other video and then you kind of have to figure out um, how it is that you want to style it um, so most hairstyles are like wig styles are gonna have um, sort of like basic elements to it so generally you're either gonna be working with a hairstyle that is straight wavy curly or has some sort of like braiding or like decorative moment sort of in it for lack of better words um so if you kind of like always like break your hairstyles down into those elements it can kind of help you through um contemporary looks period looks and fantasy looks so i think it can seem kind of like overwhelming and like daunting sometimes to just like completely come up with these like intricate hairstyles and things that are super different but if you just like break it down into parts like that um i think helps it helps make things like a little bit more clear um so for straight hair so that might seem sort of like obvious right like we know what straight hair is straight hair is just stick straight hair if it's human hair you can blow dry it straight um straighten it straight uh you can use really large rollers that's going to help kind of give it more of like a natural straight look as opposed to like the sleekness um that you would get with a straightener um, if it's synthetic hair and you need it straight, you can't just like put a straightener on it, right? Um, again, some synthetic hair, um, it can handle heat. Sometimes they make synthetic irons, but generally speaking, if you have synthetic hair um, and you need it straight, you need to steam it. Um, so that's one thing I did forget to mention um, in the other video is that you need to have some kind of a steamer on hand unless you are somehow magically exclusively only working with human hair for the rest of your life, um, which I doubt because a lot of places end up using like synthetic wigs. Um, so you're probably going to need a, a steamer at some point so um it can it's just like a closed steamer basically um some places have those really big industrial steamers that's great like if you're working in a theater probably wardrobe is like next to you and you have that um if you're just like at home or you're just doing wigs or whatever um a little clothing steamer works great so if you have one of like the little handheld steamers um please be careful with them. I feel like they seem like cute and friendly and like they can't do anything to hurt you. But uh, me personally, when I was in school, um, I was doing a wig where I had to like flip out the bottom. Um, and I had my like cute little like pink steamer because they're always like pink and purple and like adorable colors. Um, I feel like to try to sell to you. Um, and I tipped it just like a little bit too far and the top like exploded off of it. And it literally almost like all went on my face like I somehow moved at just the right moment and none of the like water got on me but if you think about that it is boiling water basically inside of that little thing so if that gets on you that's you're burned um and those are gonna be probably some serious burns because steam can burn you water can burn you um so you have to be really careful you cannot tip them um to this day I feel like I am still afraid every time that I use them um so you need to be holding it straight that's why it's great to have your little like wig block on a clamp um on a table or on a freestanding wig clamp so you can manipulate that do not tip your steamers it is tempting to tip the steamers don't tip the steamers um, especially those little handheld ones because that was one of the most terrifying moments of my life um, so you want to be really careful with that um, a lot of times the steamers also drip water so it's dripping really hot water right so um, if you are sitting down and doing it put a towel over your lap me personally I don't like to sit down in case it does explode because I'm that afraid since that happened to me um, so I usually just put a towel on the floor so the floor doesn't get really wet um, but it's just something to be careful of I don't think that we think about it a lot but um, 
steam is hot it might sound stupid but I just think sometimes when you're working you don't think about that kind of stuff so just always be super careful um, it doesn't have to be like a hot straightener or curling iron uh, for it to really hurt you so be mindful of that be careful um, if you are going to use it, um, the steamer to steam your, um, synthetic wig straight, you want to section it off just like you would if you were working on, like, somebody's hair. You don't just, like, like, I'm not just gonna, like, take all of my hair and, like, clamp this down. Um, you want to do it in sections. Um, I think me personally, when I work, I feel like, um, I feel like I usually work from, like, I don't know. I feel like I switch it up, working top to bottom and bottom top, to be honest with you. Um... But I feel like if I work and I do the bottom first, that way I don't have to have this, like, clamped up. At least if you're straightening it, I feel like curling it maybe is, like, a little bit different. But I don't know. I'm trying to think. I think when I do it, I feel like I go bottom to top with it. But as long as you're doing it in, like, smaller sections and layers, um, you're going to get, like, a more effective, like, straightening than you would if you just, like, clamped down all of it. And you're going to need, like, a big comb to kind of help you, like, ease the steamer through it and, like, um, straighten it out. So it's kind of similar to, like, if you're, like, blow drying hair um, to straighten it out. It's going to be, like, those same kind of motions where you just have to, like, steam it and, like, pull it, um, and that is going to straighten it. But again, be very, very careful. Um, you're also going to need a steamer if you are doing a roller set on a synthetic wig um, because in order for the curl to hold, um, you basically have to steam it into place. And when I think of things like that, it's like when you're steaming a synthetic wig, it's like kind of like you're like melting it and you can almost see, like, I think it's kind of fun to watch as much as I am afraid of steaming things now. Um, you can like see the hair like shrink up, um, and kind of like melt almost, um, for lack of better words. Um, and that's kind of how you know, like, okay, it's ready. Um, but, um, as far as like curling wigs go, cause I guess that's the next tangent I'm going to go on. Um, I feel like most hairstyles you have to do for theater, unless it is something like very contemporary or specific, is gonna have some kind of like roller set and curl in it. Um, if it's human hair, like yeah, you can just hit it with a curling iron, but I feel like putting a roller set, it just lasts a lot longer. Like when people get their hair roller set, it lasts a long time. Um, so what that means is like you're basically just taking, you're taking some kind of roller, you're wrapping the hair around it, pinning it down, um, and that's what's gonna create your curl. So if it's human hair, um, once you're done, you can just pop it in the dryer. Once it's dry, um, you can take your rollers out. If it's synthetic, you have to steam it. Um, and if you don't steam it or you don't steam it well enough, your curls are probably not going to hold because you're basically just like wrapping plastic around something and hoping that maybe it takes the form. But when you hit it with the heat, that kind of like forces it to reshape itself. Um, and that's what's kind of cool about synthetic hair is that synthetic hair, um, it wants to hold style a lot more, I feel like, than human hair does. Because um, if you notice like a lot of times with like human hair, if we curl it, um, as soon as it's like humid or hot or like you look at it wrong, your hair straightens back out, right? Um, with synthetic hair, if somebody is like dancing a ton in a show or it's outdoor theater and it's super hot, um, synthetic hair is probably going to hold up a lot better um, than a human hair wig would. So I think a lot of times people are always like, oh, everybody has to be in human hair and human hair is better. Um, but sometimes I do think that like, especially if you need like really curly hair and it's really like intense like motion and things you're going to be doing, um, I think a synthetic is better, honestly. Like you can get a great like lace run synthetic um, and nobody will know the difference, right? Um, so for curly hair, if you aren't just going to be hitting it with a curling iron, um, if you are going to be doing your roller set, which is good to do, like, even if it is just, like, a style that's, like, a little bit wavier, um, which is basically just means that you're going to, like, brush curls out, um, it just gives it more, like, body and volume, I think, to have a roller set, so I just think it's always a good place to start. It helps, um, when you're doing, like, updos and things, too, because it kind of, like, trains the hair, um, to kind of, like, fall in the way that you want it to. Um, so if you are going to do a roller set, um, you kind of have to think about the way that you're putting the rollers in. So I'm going to do, like, a separate video, um, that demos that, because I feel like it's one of those things that, like, talking about it, it gets a little bit confusing. Um, but basically you're either going to be putting your rollers on, um, on base, off base, or forward of base. Um, so if it's on base, that basically just means, um, that when you're putting the roller down, the roller is, like, touching like the base of the hair and where the hair is um if it's forward of base that means it's going to be like pushed forward a little bit um that's really good if you're doing like pompadours um or some kind of like like bump or something because that's going to help give you like that front volume um and then if it's off base that means it's going to be like pulled back a little bit um again that's going to be a little bit easier to understand um when I am like doing the demo of it, but you kind of do have to think about like how you're putting the rollers in, the direction you're putting them in, um, cause whatever direction you put that roller is the direction that when you take that curl out, it's gonna go. So if you don't want curls like falling in someone's face, roll it back from somebody's face, right? Um, most of the time, like I feel like things are gonna be like going back or like kind of like down um, and or like down and back or something that 
like it did make sense but um rarely are you going to have things that are like your rollers are going to be pulled up so if you are doing like a really flippy style um that's probably an instance where something might be kind of rolling up um or sometimes i feel like on the nape of wicks i like to have it rolling up if it's something i eventually have to like pull up uh, but most of the time stuff's going to be like getting pulled back um or like kind of forward um you're rarely going to have anything going straight up like that um you want to use end papers um when you're doing roller sets i'm really bad at that I don't always do it, but it really helps you kind of like control your ends and make sure that like the hair is not going crazy. Um, it can also help with like making it so that your entire hair, like length of hair curls, because sometimes if you don't have something that's like pulling all the ends in, like the very end of your curls will just like be like blah and like be nothing. Um, so this kind of like forces it around the roller and helps it be um, kind of like curly everywhere. Again, that's going to make more sense um, when I demo it than just me like speaking random words about it. Um, if you do a roller set, your hair needs to be wet. That's like the very first thing. Wig needs to be blocked down properly and securely because um, you're going to be pulling on it because you have to keep good tension um, when you're doing your roller set. The hair has to be wet. If the hair is not wet, it's not going to do anything. So like I could put rollers in my hair right now. It's dry. That's not going to do anything. So even if it's human hair, it has to be wet. If it's synthetic hair, it has to be wet. And then with synthetic hair, you have to steam it once all your rollers are in. Um, you really should steam each roller like 30 seconds. I don't always sit there and count for every single one, um, but you really, like, you want to watch it and see if it's, like, melting it down. Um, you want to get from, like, all angles with the rollers. You want to make sure that you're kind of, like, going through the center of it, too. Um, if you are using, like, straws, um, be careful with how much steam you're hitting on it, but you do have to make sure um, that you really are, like, getting each little curl with steam. Or if you have tons of, like, tiny straws in it, make sure you're over each section for, like, 30 seconds so that everything... Um, is getting as much like steam as possible um and then if you have a wig dryer you want to pop your wigs in the dryer so um I don't usually change the heat settings for things I kind of go with like whatever theater I happen to be working at at the time like whatever the person in charge um does is kind of what I do but um generally if it's like a human hair um or if you're like using facial hair and it's like yak hair or something um you would it can go on high in a wig dryer and I usually I start things at an hour I don't usually put it in for more than an hour at first um I think an hour usually unless it's like really thick really long hair um an hour should probably dry it especially if it's on high um and then if you have a synthetic wig and you have a wig dryer um putting it on low is probably a little bit better I don't know if I've ever really I like I said I feel like whatever it's set on it, which is probably like not the best to not pay attention um, is what I go with but just be careful you don't want to fry it because it is plastic um, and again I don't put things in for more than an hour to start with I would rather have to like put it back in for 30 minutes than like bake it for way too long um, if you don't have a wig dryer you can make like makeshift wig dryers I personally have no experience with that so I am not going to speak to that um, there are directions in like um, the wig making and styling book uh, that I love so much and I'm sure there are videos and things online I personally have never done it so I'm not going to advise to do it or against it because I honestly don't know. Um, I've been very lucky that I worked at places with wig dryers and the places that I haven't worked. Um, I've just made it work. Um, it's tricky because you have to give things a lot of time to dry if you don't have a wig dryer and they're in a roller set so that's where like you just really have to like plan out um, the amount of time you know you have to do things because if you need a wig done by tomorrow and you're putting it in a roller set and it's midnight and they need it at like 8 a.m it's probably not going to be dry without a wig dryer in time for you to style it so like you really have to make sure that you like keep yourself um on track um i think i have used the blow dryer on like cool before when i was like really desperate um but you really should never use i mean it's on cool so it's like not gonna melt it or be heat on a synthetic wig um but really it's better if you are not putting any kind of heat directly in your wigs but I have done it so um, it definitely happens sometimes um, so that's a little bit on curling hair um, you can pin curl hair too that's I think better for like if you're gonna do like a finger wave style or something so wavy hair is like another kind of um, hairstyle that you might have to do probably for doing wavy hair in theater it is gonna be like thing, um, finger waves um, personally I hate just trying to do finger waves without a roller set I think if you do the roller set first um it just like sets it up for you um because if you put the rollers in certain places and again um we'll talk more about that like when I'm doing um the demo for it it's just gonna set those like s like waves up in the hair um and you're not gonna have to do as much work I am horrifically bad at finger waves without a roller set um just trying to get the hair to manipulate and move the way that you want um 
with like no help from like the curl pattern basically like being changed I don't know if that's like the right way to say that but you know what I mean if you have like no pattern that's like put into it with the rollers um it's so hard so I really recommend um do a roller set if you can um if you're doing it on somebody's head it's a little bit easier I think to do finger waves um without it but um if you can do a roller set on a wig to do your finger waves that's probably better otherwise if you're trying to get wavy hair um if you braid it especially if you braid it when it's wet and you let it dry um and then undo it that's going to give you more of like a loose like natural wave um and most of the time probably if you're doing waves it's either going to be finger waves or it's going to be curls that you brush out um and then other styling methods that you might do um you might just have to put bunch of braids into something right so braids are going to be done as like wig prep but then they're also done I feel like a lot of times it's like decoration like when I've had wigs where like it has to be like an updo and like I don't know what to do with it but it has to be something like you put a bunch of braids in it people are usually like oh wow like that's so nice um so it's good to keep some braiding skills on hand so I really did not learn how to braid until like after my second um semester or no my second year of college yeah my second year of college which is not good you should probably if you're interested in this like probably learn it like right away um you want to learn how to do just like your basic three strand braid um and french braiding I think those are like if you can at least do those um that's gonna be good because that's gonna be important um for wig prep but you can also do a lot of like little styles um being able to do those but if you like braiding um or you're forced to like braiding like I had a show um my last semester in college where we were just using everybody's like own like natural hair for it um and they all just had to have different braids because they were very like active so we needed the hair like out of their face but I don't even remember how many different people were in it but it was like a lot of different braided hair like maybe like between like eight and ten I don't know I could be making that up but there were like somewhere in that world um people in the show and they all had to have different like braided hairstyles um so you have to learn things sometimes really quickly so that's when I learned um more like how to fishtail braid and like do like dutch braids um rope braids are really popular too so it's just like the more like little things like that you can learn um the more like almost like like creative and like exciting um your work can get um just because you're not gonna be like relying on the exact same stuff um every time you style wigs so I feel like the more you style wigs um the more you're going to kind of fall into a pattern of like this is kind of like your signature thing like I can think of like friends that I have um where I'm like oh like that specific swoop like that's always how they style it or like with me like I feel like I have a very specific way that like I have sort of like a three-part way that I'll like pin like basic period wigs when you just need like a bun with like the hair pulled back or something um so you will kind of like fall into patterns of like this is how you know you like to style things but um you're gonna have times where you do have to like add a little bit more to it um and just like learning things like how to do like different kinds of braids um it really can kind of like make a difference and make things that like instead of it's just being a bun it has like a little bit more going on than that um and it's also great just because um it's more of like a universal hairstyle. You can use it on wigs, you can use it on people, you can use it on all different kinds of hair textures. Um, and it's just sort of like, there's like no limit with how much you can do with it. So um, I should have learned it way earlier. So hopefully uh, it is something that you pick up. Um, so this was all kind of like rapid fire. I feel like wig and hair styling information. Um, but that's a lot of like the basics. So obviously if it's like a shorter wig, um, like either like a men's wig or just like a pixie cut or something like that, that's going to follow more of like the same rules as like, um, styling natural hair I feel like um, I've had times where like um, hair has had to be sewn down so when I worked on um, a show where somebody had to have like a pompadour um, I believe it was like oh, I might have been about Johnny Cash but I could be completely wrong and just completely butchered that but I feel like it was maybe about Johnny Cash I don't know but I did the wig for it um and there had to be like a little pompadour thing and it just like I was not there I was just like doing the wig and like hand literally handing it off to someone at a train station um and then like my friend kind of like took it from there um she ended up having to like sew down um the pompadour part so that it would stay in place so again that's a really great thing if you're trying to get like that really specific style but somebody's active and it's a musical um it's a wig so you can do things like that if it's someone's hair trying to get a pompadour to stay when they're super active not very easy um but if it's a wig you can sew random things down and nobody has to know so that's kind of a trick uh, I feel like with like any kind of like hairstyle like that like if I had a wig with like um victory rolls in it and I knew I wasn't gonna have to take it down because the run isn't that long I'd probably like sew it down too so there's little things like that that you can do um that I feel like that's why like I love wigs more like I hate styling hair on actual people I think wigs are so much better um because you can do all those little things that you can't actually do on a person so um that's something that might happen more with like short hair but otherwise um the same kind of like pomades and hair gels and things that you use on 
like regular hair it usually is fine for styling like a wig that's like short um but the more you do it the more you're going to kind of like figure things out so I didn't go to cosmetology school personally um because I really am not super passionate about like cutting hair um and styling actual hair like I like wigs um but I don't really want to do like regular hair or anything but if it is something that you like um it never hurts you to like know more um and people do like when people have licenses so you'd be able to do like haircuts at theaters and things um and you know more about like dyeing hair and everything too so certainly I think if it's something that you could see yourself doing and that you're interested in um it's never a bad idea to get more education um but yeah so hopefully you enjoyed my many tangents on basic wig styling um and this just kind of helps things make a little bit more sense or maybe like piques your interest a little bit and yeah hope you enjoyed this one